First action of the season tonight. He's coming off a preseason right hand injury. Had been out for a few weeks and he is available tonight. And that makes a difference. Talking about a guy that was with Kansas State a year ago. K State went to the Elite Eight. So he's experienced. He's a stretch four. Merrimack in the dark blue. First possession for the Warriors out of the Northeast Conference. Driving right down the lane. Just told you about Dirk Kack, and there he goes, unguarded for two. Just a little fake handoff and no communication. Two Hoyas go with out the basketball and leaves a wide open lane. 14 and a half points per game for Dirk Kack. Inside, knocked around, goes out of bounds, and it will go back to the Warriors. Joe Gallo is the head coach for Merrimack. He's in his eighth season, 125 wins. Shepherding this program from Division II to Division I, they are eligible for the NCAA tournament this season. Yeah, they won the NEC Conference Tournament Finals last year, but couldn't play in the NCAA tournament because of their reclassification status. Not the case this year. But that led to a wild upset in the NCAA tournament. Isn't it wild how that can work? That led to Fairleigh Dickinson getting in, which led to the upset of Purdue. Turnaround comes up short. That one's knocked around and taken by the Warriors. Good hustle on the floor there. Diallo. And you can see that really active extended 2-3 zone. The wings get really high for Merrimack. They're really active trying to turn the Hoyas over. They are three and four on the season. One and three away from their home court. Well defended on the drive and the transition. And then knocked away. We're going back the other way. Dirkak an easy lay-in. Ed Cooley told us first order of business is going to be taking care of the basketball. And already some points off turnovers. A little out of control from Epps. Leads to an easy one. This is Styles. Transfer from North Carolina. Jay Heath also played some basketball in the ACC a couple years at Boston College. And now in the Big East. The shot clock is down to six. Bristol, little follow away there, the free throw line. Cook fights for it on the baseline, tried to save it. Bristol ran it down. Dirkak picked it up and he drives and lays it in. He's represented all of the scoring so far. Yeah, Dirkak off to a great start, but I'm not sure what Wayne Bristol was looking at there. Almost like he thought he was tipping it right to Epps, but instead it hit Dirkak on the run. Just three easy layups for the leading scorer for Merrimack to get things started. Georgetown comes in at four and two. They are four and one at home. And that includes the win last Saturday against Jackson State, 88-81, where the Hoyas shot 54% as a team above their season average of 47%. Good passing. The jam attempted bounces off for Styles, but a foul on the play. Ed Cooley is the first year head coach. Comes over from Providence. He led that program to seven NCAA tournament appearances, including the Sweet 16 in 2022. He did an outstanding job at, at Providence. And well, uh, he's changing jobs within the same league. It is a different situation he's taking over. He's having to rebuild it from the ground up, infuse that culture of, of toughness. There's usually an edge that Georgetown plays with that Ed Cooley's trying to tap back into it. Takes a little time, but if there's one guy I'm definitely not going to doubt. It's that guy right there, Ed Cooley. Having a conversation with several of his players from the starting lineup. Big time changes. Yeah, I don't I don't think he's very pleased with the start of this game. Been a little sloppy with the basketball, not executed against this 2-3 zone. And so now he's going to the bench. See if there can be a little bit of a spark. Coach Cooley, 54 years old from Providence, Rhode Island. Taking over a Georgetown program that has struggled in conference play over the last couple of seasons. Yeah, and that's putting it lightly. And right now, it's good to see Rowan Brumbaugh, another Hoya that was out in the last game, was sick. So he's in one, number one in gray. True Fielder is also in there as well, number 20 in gray. And he's able to corral that loose ball and start the break for Georgetown. You see in this zone, see how wide open that baseline is, Tom? That's where the ball's got to get to. you got to get it to that short corner area and then attack. That's Ryan Matumbo moving along that baseline, number 21 in gray. 
Pass is intercepted. Stepping in the passing lane. Devin Savage, who's a double-digit scorer for the Warriors. Over 11 points per game. That looks like that might be the first turnover of the game for Merrimack. The easy call, just too many steps on the short roll. Yeah, they had 18 turnovers, Nick, in that loss last Saturday at home against Alabama State, 66 to 60. That's the first thing that Joe Gallo told us. We got to limit those turnovers tonight. Yeah, and he said there could be a little bit of growing pains as he's trying to give his guys a little bit more freedom offensively, play a little faster. But certainly, you got to take care of the ball and reward that freedom with some intelligence if you're a player. Tumbo, power, dribble. Brumbaugh in traffic. Whistle and foul. Well, Merrimack off to a pretty good start. It's always nice when you get your top gun. A couple of easy ones. Dirt Cat with the look that Ed Cooley told us that needed to happen was ball security needed to be at a premium taking on Merrimack in this very extended and active 2-3 zone. Dirk Hack is the sophomore, 6'5 guard. Rowan Brumbaugh is at the free throw line for Georgetown. Coach Cooley going to the bench yeah. relatively early in this one. I, I think there was a little message sent that he was not pleased with the attention to detail and effort from his starters. And so he has gone to the bench and looking for a spark. You know, Brumbaugh had only missed two free throws all season before those two. He was 11 of 13. And so it's still the 6-2 advantage for Merrimack out of the Northeast Conference. Tried a little backdoor, lost the handle. Brumbaugh up ahead. And that one's picked off by Diallo. Fourth turnover of the game from Georgetown. Turnovers have been an issue for this group so far. And again, that's going to be tested with the way Merrimack plays. Traveling violation in the corner and back to the Hoyas. On top of taking care of the ball, Georgetown's got to get into a rhythm and a flow, Tom, against this 2-3 zone. Been stagnant on their heels, way extended beyond the three-point line. Got to find a way to get it into the part of the zone right at that Big East logo and really on that short corner on the baseline. Three-pointer going long distance. And that is Masood. His first action of the season. He's got his first points with a three. It's Georgetown debut. Pretty good looking stroke, and that's what he does as a player. He's a shooter with size. How about 144 career three point baskets now for Masood after that one? Shot clock goes inside of 10 for the Warriors. Down to three. Got it away along the baseline. Masood, he'll bring it up. Georgetown has a team, one of the better three-point shooting teams in the league. It is early on, but they do shoot 38% from beyond the arc. Epps lost it on the way to the rim. Dirkak gave it up. Long rebound goes to the Hoya bench. You see Esmael Masood, the Kansas State transfer. Talking about a guy scored 15 points in the Sweet 16 against Michigan State, knocked down four threes. So he understands what it takes and how it's supposed to look at a high level. And it's good to see him out there making his Georgetown debut. 6'9", 213 pounds from East Harlem, New York. For two years in that Kansas State program. Foul coming up on the collision. His fifth year of college basketball, two years at Wake Forest, two years at Kansas State, now one year at Georgetown. But Ed Cooley also pointed out how in this transfer portal world, it's interesting where you're getting, you're like their third head coach, you know, for, for some of these guys who have made the rounds in college basketball. Jay Heath is another one on this roster that is on his third program. Heath is playing in his 107th career collegiate basketball game. A couple of years at BC. No success at the rim for Baco. Adam Bud Clark, zero in dark blue. And the reset. A little hesitation. Lead is now one, six, five in the paint. 
too strong with the attempt there from O'Connell. This is where I think Georgetown needs to push it a little bit. Try and beat this zone down the floor so you don't have to go against it. Epps. Three-pointer by Epps, and he was fouled in the act of shooting. Well, one thing Joe Gallo said that we have to do in this zone is can't allow rhythm easy threes for Jaden Epps. Gonna have to always talk, make sure you're aware that is way too easy. Just a simple swing, and you get a guy that has scored back-to-back 30-point -back games, lining one up and knocking one down. First time for the Georgetown program to have a player do that since 2010. And Epps can shoot it from beyond the arc. 46%, second best in the Big East, and he's at the line. Chance at a four-point play. He, he was a guy that ran the show for Illinois a year ago, hit the transfer portal. Pretty good pickup for Ed Cooley. 31 games in an Illini uniform for Epps. So the Hoyas have taken control of the lead. Durkak, who has all six points so far, now has all eight for Merrimack. Really strong. Had a couple of paws from Hoyas trying to rip that ball away from him. He's able to step through and get it off the glass. Eight points, all layups for Durkak. He's also fighting through an ankle injury he suffered against Maine earlier this season. No ill effects of it there. Turnover, trying to finish it off, and he will lay it in. Double digits. That's how Merrimack wants to play. They want to contest every pass and turn it into offense. Epps with the old school runner. Again, the more Georgetown can push it, now they got to start making better decisions, but the more they can attack early in the possession and even get some primary break situations to avoid going against that zone, I think it'll serve them well. Epps was 10 of 18 shooting in that win against Jackson State and his career high and game high 34 points also made seven three-pointers and the ball back to Georgetown and Epps That's a couple of easy shots for O'Connell right at the rim. He missed Taken back by the Warriors Savage Third tech just fires away Long rebound O'Connell. One point game. 11.25 and rolling in our first half of action from Capital One Arena. First all time. Taken back by the Warriors. Savage. Dirtak just fires away. Long rebound O'Connell. One point game. 11:25 and rolling in our first half of action from Capital One Arena. First all-time meeting between these two programs. But it's not the first meeting between Ed Cooley and Joe Gallo. They have played each other a couple of times when Cooley was at Providence. Well, back and forth we go. Been a little bit turnover prone both ways, but that's what Merrimack does. Hand in the passing lane, hands full. And so games have been too close for comfort. But if you want to look at the silver lining, you can learn a little bit about your group when you're having to defend with the game on the line, execute offense with the game on the line, make plays and decisions with the game on the line. It could serve Georgetown well as they progress, but there's no question that in the moment, it has stressed Ed Cooley out quite a bit. November 19th was that OT win against American at home, 88-83, and tonight is the fourth of seven straight home games. The Georgetown Hoyas, four and two on the season. Epps, another runner, there's a tip, fielder at the rim. That's also where Georgetown's got to sink their teeth into Merrimack on the offensive glass and really attack this zone for second chance opportunities if you're Georgetown. Fielder had quality minutes against Jackson State. Six rebounds to tie a season high, 18 minutes off the bench, and he just tapped that one in. Georgetown by three. Warriors trying to save this possession with the shot clock down to two. Fielder knocked it away. Six points for Epps on two of three shooting. Turnaround, Masood. Over the top there was Styles to keep it alive. Fouled on the three-pointer again. 
Incredible. Almost gonna have you know, two four-point plays in the first ten minutes for Jaden Epps. Big shots out to John Trez Styles there, getting that offensive rebound, kicking it out, ultimately leads into Jaden Epps' hands. Best time to shoot a three is off of an offensive rebound because people are scrambled, not matched up. Unbelievable potential. Two four-point plays for Mr. Epps. So nine points for Epps on three of four shooting. Two of two from long distance. And as Nick mentioned, chance at another four-point play. You start scrambling through the record books now, right? <laughs> yeah, no doubt. Now he can really score. He can score off the dribble. He can shoot the three off the dribble. He can make tough shots. Just a big-time playmaker with the rock. Boys in the midst of an 8-0 run. Merrimack trying to end it. The miss there from McCoy. Epps. Heath. Up and under. Jay Heath for Georgetown. That's what I'm talking about, though, Tom. Playing a little with a little bit of pace. Epps pushing it. And Heath then with the cut behind the defense. Good offense from Georgetown. First points of the night for Jay Heath, who averages almost 11 per game. To go along with four rebounds. Double digit score against Jackson State with 13 for Heath. Box out from Bristol. Epps weaving his way. Looking to score and had it knocked out of bounds. Itumnu blocked that one for Merrimack. We hear the best way to sometimes beat a zone is to beat it down the floor. And before it can get set, you're able to get into the teeth of it. And Heath with the nice basket cut. So Epps has to pick and choose his times to put his foot on the gas to run in the open floor. Mid-range turnaround. And the Hoyas have an 11-point lead. Thanks to Bristol. And also thanks to the bench. That, the starters were flat, Tom. And that's where Ed Cooley pulled out, the, made a wholesale hockey line change. And it's kind of changed the complexion of this game. This foul is going to go against the Hoyas, according to Jamie Lucky. He's alongside Michael Roberts and Nathan Hall, our officiating crew this evening. Looks like Durkak is going to come back into the game. We saw him hit the stanchion awkwardly on one of his driving layups. Durkak in this game has 10 points. He's the only player so far who has scored for the Warriors. They try to go inside and they get to Diallo from Durkak. So this is where Merrimack can set their three-quarter court pressure. This isn't really meant to turn you over. It's more to eat some shot clock, and now they'll get active. But the key is got to know where Epps is at if you're Merrimack in this zone. It's the Georgetown team that has five players averaging in double figures, including two of the top three scorers in the Big East. Bristol had a chance to keep it alive, pried away. Warriors on the run, stripped by Epps. He got it back. It was Savage who stayed with the play for Merrimack. Needed to have some other Georgetown guys trailing the play to try to clean up that loose ball. See the eight points off of the Georgetown turnovers by Merrimack. Epps couldn't find some daylight. Heat's pass almost picked off. That'll stay with Georgetown. So the Hoyas on their home court with a 21-14 lead against the guests and start to get out of pocket is when you give up some easy shots in that 2-3 zone. Coach Cooley's team overcoming the early struggles. Look at that. <laughs> Just jamming. <laughs> 7 of 15, his team shooting 47%. They've got possession of the lead and the basketball. Cook. Over the shoulder move, the tip on top of the rim. Styles couldn't get it to fall. And then the Warriors went out of bounds with the basketball, so it stays with Georgetown. The offensive rebounds have helped Georgetown immensely. That's kind of made up for all the turnovers for the Hoyas. 15 to 5 is the advantage on the glass right now for Georgetown. Bristol, wraparound pass. Cook regathers, tries the tip. Hard working Cook. And he hit the floor and a foul and a whistle. It's a 
good pass from Wayne Bristol Jr. But Supreme Cook couldn't field it cleanly. If he fields that cleanly, it's a potential three-point play. But instead, he's going to have to go to the free throw line. Did a good job sticking with it, though, and playing with some toughness. That was Savage who picked up the foul for Merrimack. Okay, two shots. I thought it was interesting. We asked Ed Cooley, are there some players that need to elevate in terms of their play and their production to elevate the team? And one of the first guys he's talked about was Supreme Cook, the Fairfield transfer. He's the one guy that plays with some physicality and can protect the rim. And that's something that Ed Cooley's teams always have. So Supreme Cook needs to continue to get comfortable and expand his game as this season progresses. Easily one of the best names in all of college oh. basketball. Three years at Fairfield University and 91 games played prior to transferring into the Georgetown program for the East Orange, New Jersey native Supreme Cook. I had to laugh reading up on the Hoyas. Ed Cooley nicknamed Supreme Cook the Terminator because he doesn't say much, but he produces. And so he needs some more production at Supreme Cook. He's a he's a good player. He was a very productive player at Fairfield. Eight double doubles last year. He was third team All Mac. Third cat. You know that ball may have hit the top of the backboard or the shot clock. That will not count. The only thing that Durkak does not do well is shoot the three-point field goal. That's his only struggle right now. He, other than that, he's done a nice job attacking the hoop. He's 0 for 2 on threes. And he'd only made two all season. Now on 19 tries for Durkak. Heath. Sue. Back to Heath. It's a two-man game right now for Georgetown. Masood into the clock, the tip fielder. And it's going to be a struggle for Merrimack to keep Georgetown off the glass, especially with how extended their wings are up the floor. It's going to be a wide open two. So they broke the pressure, and then Itunu was wide open. Yeah, that's just too easy. You can't. Break a press and make one pass and have a layup just like that. So Fielder has four points right now. That is above his season average, 3.7, and that styles along the baseline. Appeared to step out of bounds on the drive attempt. I think he did. And Dontre Styles has been a little quiet tonight. If you take a look at it, I think that right foot steps on the baseline. Yep, right there. They're guarded by Brian Utumnu, who had the bucket wide open at the other end, and the ball back to the Warriors. They got Heath with the foul for Georgetown. I think some of this full court pressure is trying to infuse some energy into the Hoyas from Ed Cooley. And again, the Warriors able to break it, set up the offense with 5.41 to go in our first half. 24-16, Georgetown in front. Merrimack completing its transition to Division I from Division II a season ago. Underneath, good passing and a follow, an attempt at a bucket. O'Connell staying with it, and he got fouled in the process. Really good offense from Merrimack, driving it here. Excellent job from Diallo, finding O'Connell and drop off and the quick step back. Good quick drum, jump from O'Connell and beat Fielder to it. Now got a chance for a three-point play. O'Connell has only attempted five free throws on the season. Well, my mistake, I thought they gave him the and one. He's got I did two, two shots, yep. He certainly scored on the second attempt, but that was after the foul was called. So one of two, poked away, an attempt to save by Diallo. He goes into the Georgetown bench, and the Hoyas get the ball back. Uh, let's see if Ed Cooley can drop a set here against this zone. We're just got to break this pressure, but once you get situated, see if you can execute something. Lead is seven. Georgetown is led by as many as 11. 
And they were up 21 10 earlier in this first half. Epps denied entry. Shot clock down to 10. Game clock down to five minutes. Epps on the drive. O'Connell defending. And the foul coming up against the Warriors. One thing that's good to see with Jaden Epps is he dislocated his finger in the last ball game against Jackson State, his right index finger. But it appears so far that he is shooting the ball well. He's aggressive and there, even into contact, he didn't shy away from it. He had 31 points in that win against American at home. That was in overtime, and at the time, that was his career high until he broke it with 34 points against Jackson State. And he had to have it pop back in. I've never had that. Have you ever had that? Dislocated finger? I don't even want to think. I don't even want to think about it either. I don't want to see it. <laughs> I don't want to think about it. And it's good to see that he appears to be at full strength tonight. Yeah, he has two, if you're just joining us, two four-point plays in the first half. Fouled in the act of shooting on two three-pointers in the first half for Epps. Pretty amazing. On the pressure. Foul coming up against Georgetown. Brumbaugh whistled for the foul. You know, we talk about the dislocated finger. There, Jay Heath has battled turf toe. Obviously, Ismail Massoud just making his season debut. So, navigating injuries has been a challenge so far for Ed Cooley. Perimeter ball movement from the Warriors. Back out to Diallo. Andrew Studer from Senegal, travel. Well, Coach Cooley said, Nick, you might have to suit up if I can't <laughs> yeah. play these guys with toe injuries and finger injuries, but and, and they're in the lineup. Th think how hard it is, though. Year one, you're trying to in install your system, install your co culture, and you don't have your full allotment of players available for practice. And it's just been a challenging set of circumstances on a variety of levels for Ed Cooley. Epps, long distance three attempt. Durkak got clipped there as Bristol got a piece of Durkak. So Durkak has 10 points, and then four other players have scored, but three guys with two points and one point from O'Connell. So it's mostly been Durkak. The leading scorer. Supreme Cook comes back in. Drew Fielder with his four points goes to the bench. Epps is the leading scorer for Georgetown. He's got 11 on three of six shooting. Clark has to back it out. Popped in the air and taken by the Hoyas. And stolen right back. Durkak lays it in. Got the pass from McCoy off of the steal. Durkak is keeping it really simple tonight. He's just running the floor and finishing at, at the hoop. But it's a big mistake there from Jaden Epps. Looks like he had a Hoya out in front. Instead, he delayed it and then threw an easy pick six turnover. Brumball, the runner, front rim. Foul and the indication is that we're going to keep it at this end of the floor. Uh, this has happened time and time again. A turnover forced from just a little bit, Tom, to settle in against a zone and get used to it and how to attack it. We'll see if Georgetown can play a little cleaner for the remainder of this game against this 2 3 zone from Merrimack. Both teams in the bonus with Cook at the free throw line. So Merrimack. From beyond the arc, 0 for 6 in the game so far. Still hanging in there, though, with Georgetown. Big block. Coming over for the help, Masood. This Merrimack program, 0 for 3 against the Big East. That includes a couple of games against Ed Cooley and Providence in the last three years. There is a player down behind the plate, it is Epps for Georgetown. Whistle stops play on the Diallo drive. And that is Epps shaken up for the moment. That's certainly not a good sight.
had a hard take to the basket and clearly got hit. Epps, who is the leading scorer in the Big East so far. And it caught him in the eye. Well, certainly that's a uh, very important Hoya that is walking now back to the locker room. Yeah, with 2.54 to go in the first half. Epps back to the locker room for further evaluation with Diallo at the free throw line. So we'll certainly keep an eye on the status of Jaden Epps. Transferring into the Georgetown program from Illinois his first year. So now if you're Merrimack, you need to understand that the best shooter for Georgetown is not on the floor. So you can kind of pack that pain in a little bit more when the ball does get into the heart of that zone. Yeah, Epps three of six from the floor and a couple of threes and 11 points, but in the locker room right now. Foul coming up against Diallo. I don't know about that call. It looked like Diallo was just trying to fight through a screen as Brumbaugh was really just exchanging. I don't even know if he was really trying to screen him that hard. That's a tough call on Diallo. To the displeasure of Joe Gallo, who, by the way, if you're going to have someone bring you from Division II to Division I, why not the 2004 Merrimack grad? He's had incredible success. Yeah. As Nick mentioned, they won their conference tournament a season ago against Fairleigh Dickinson. 67-66 in that championship game on their home floor. Yeah, he's done a remarkable job. It's not easy to transition, obviously, from D2 to D1. He's done it seamlessly. And it's interesting talking to him. He said he really hasn't made that many changes to the program's identity. He said, yeah, we maybe have recruited a, a higher-level player here and there, but for the most part, we have just continued to do what we do. And again, Merrimack was ineligible for the NCAA tournament or else they would have gone as the Northeast Conference champs. They will move to the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference for this upcoming season. Sacred Heart will join them from the Northeast Conference. You're talking about a, a program in Merrimack. They have a culture because there's been continuity in that coaching staff with the head man And they have a crystal clear identity with that zone and it helps you recruit uh, Really it seems like the future is pretty bright for Merrimack Including the immediate future. This is a five-point game all of a sudden Georgetown had led by double digits early in the half Led by 11 and that one will softly fall in for Bud Clark. Well, it's interesting. Mer Merrimack almost is doing the opposite of what I was anticipating with Epps out. It looks like they're ratcheting up the pressure, willing to take a little bit more risks. But again, when you get all this extended out, look, there's only one guy in the paint. That's why rebounding is really hard right now for Merrimack. Brumbaugh against two defenders. High degree of difficulty. Tapped out to Masood. Georgetown now one of its last 11 field goal attempts, and we get a whistle. Here we go. Not sure if there's a clock issue or what the officials are going to be looking at here. Might be checking to see if that previous shot hit the rim. Initiating a reset of the shot clock with 2.15 to go in our first half. That's Jamie Lucky over to the table. We'll try to figure this out. How about this view from right behind the back of state? Coming up at halftime, we'll take a peek at some freshman fundamentals as well as first half stats and analysis. It's all coming up on the Jeep Halftime Report, sponsored by Jeep. There's only one. And Georgetown has made just one of its last 11 chances from the floor. Still maintaining the four point lead. Epps has gone to the locker room. The leading scorer for Georgetown in the first half. Shot clock down to two. Mm. They got it away and beat the clock with a three. Masood with the awareness, knocking it down. That's where his height really... For Masood, he's tried two three-pointers and made them both. So he's got six. He is the leading scorer behind Epps with 11. And Durkak leads the way with 12 for the Warriors in the first half. Seven-point lead for Georgetown. 1.45 to go in the first half. Pull-up rattles out from Clark. He's a 50% field goal shooter. 
He's only got two points so far in this first half. That's off Diallo. Brumbaugh. Bako. Masu. Spin it. Durkak comes away with it. Ball hasn't gotten to that spot enough, though, that short corner area. Ball needs to get there more offensively for Georgetown. Stinson on the handle for the Warriors. His team down by seven. Driving deep and wraps around the rim and lays it in for Stinson. That's his first two points of the game. He's been a little quiet as well. Rim rocker on the inside from Cook. That short corner spot, when you can get it to the middle of that zone and look short corner, great things happen, and that's what happened there for Georgetown. There is a timeout on the court with 42.6 seconds to go in the first half. So just a little ball screen. Baycoat's able to get in the middle of it. Let's see if Merrimack here wants to try a little two for one. Imagine that's maybe what Joe Gallo is trying to draw up, a quick hitter. I like Durkak getting downhill. Marquette is one of four teams in the Big East currently ranked in the top 25. Number three, the Huskies from UConn right behind him at number four. And Villanova, 18th, falling earlier tonight against St. Joseph's. O'Connell! That's good execution as Georgetown will game of chess. Ed Cooley goes zone out of that timeout. And Merrimack's probably pretty used to seeing zone as they see it every day in practice. Able to attack it, get to the baseline, and get it into the middle for O'Connor. Chance to hold for the final shot. This will be Bristol. He got fouled, and that wow. might be another foul on a three-point attempt. Now that's just inexcusable. Three different occasions a Merrimack Warrior has fouled a three-point shooter. And that was Jordan McCoy challenging the shot. You just got to have better body control, Tom. You can't just barrel into guys and got to be able to contest and allow the offensive player to land. So Bristol is now 9 of 10 from the free throw line on the season. He's up to five points. Second year in the Georgetown program and a transfer from Howard University. One more coming up. He was fouled on the three-point attempt. 9.1 seconds to go. This one's an important one, Tom, to obviously you want the points, but then you can also maybe set some three-quarter court pressure just to contain the ball. Bristol had double digits in the win against Jackson State with 11 points. He's got two of those three free throw attempts. Nine seconds for a shot attempt. Durkak. Drive it all the way to the rim. Had to kick it back out. Three-point attempt. Bounces off for Savage. There's the horn, and that ends the first half. 34-27. Georgetown. Got to do a better job on the glass, and Georgetown's got to do a better job taking care of the basketball. I think how those two stats shake out are going to really tell the tale for who ends up winning this game. Capital One Arena, Washington, D.C. Tom Wormy and Nick Baugh. Three times at the NCAA tournament. Stand out with Creighton. Visiting Merrimack from North and over Massachusetts in the dark blue. Georgetown in the gray. That one tipped out of bounds. And that is off of the Warriors. Uh, important to note, no Jaden Epps on the floor for Georgetown. With a little under three minutes left. He got hit in what looked like the eye and went back to the locker room. And he is not on the floor. He is the leading scorer for Georgetown. So that is a huge storyline to track. We showed you Epps with 11 points in the first half. And that included a couple of three-point baskets. Brumbaugh on the drive, challenging the defense. He wins that mid-air fight. Really good drive and finish from the redshirt freshman. Redshirt at Texas a year ago, didn't play, obviously, and now getting thrown into the fire at Georgetown. But he is a talented kid, highly recruited. 6'4", freshman guard. 
from Washington, D.C., as Nick noted. Warriors get the bucket on the inside. That's Clark. Five foot ten, littlest guy on the floor, able to get all the way to the teeth of the defense and up through the contact to Rowan Brumbaugh, but on the other end, just really good pace on the drive from the fresh for the redshirt freshman for the finish. Old school three point play for Adam Bud Clark. Of the team with 12 points in the losing effort against Alabama State. That was an OT loss on Saturday, 66-60 for Merrimack College. Well, with, with no Epps, Jake Epps and Dontre Styles need to step up. The other area they can step up is throwing the ball inside as well. Good steal from Supreme Cook in the finish. But it's going to be all hands on deck now, scoring the ball without Epps on the floor. So going back to Georgetown now, Durkak, the double-digit scorer for Joe Gallo in the first half with 12 points on 6 of 10 shooting. And we are being told that Jaden Epps will not be returning to this ball game. So he left late in the first half on a drive, appeared to get clipped across the face unintentionally. By the Merrimack defender O'Connell, and so he won't come back out for the second half. Styles fighting on the offensive glass. Again, keep in mind, Jaden Epps, he has been leading the way back to back 30 point performances. So that's a big loss now for the rest of this game, but good activity again on the offensive glass from Georgetown. Forty-five games played in a North Carolina uniform for the transfer of Don Trez Styles. Yeah, obviously, you go to North Carolina, you're a talented dude. Just couldn't quite crack the rotation, but now he's at Georgetown, and Ed Cooley has said that they've needed to kind of instill that confidence back into Styles, and he's played well. Third leading scorer in the Big East, 17 points per game, six-six, good athlete. Need a good Dontre Styles final 18 minutes here for Georgetown. Yeah, he totally stuffed the stat sheet against Jackson State with 22 points, 9 of 13 shooting, 5 boards, and a couple of blocks in 36 minutes. Warriors move it up the floor quickly and connect out of that corner. And that's Devin Savage. That's the first made three of the game for Merrimack. And again, as a team, Came into the game shooting just 26% from beyond the arc, so not the team strength. And Savage breaking through with a three and another turnover deflected. Savage again with a reload. Styles pulls it in. And Supreme Cook is really working down low against O'Connell to try and seal. Heath with the turnaround. That's Cook. Tried the tip and then committed the foul. That's one Cook's got to grab with two hands. Don't smack at it with one hand. Grab that thing with two hands. Power back up. That's got to be a, a rebound you come down with and try to go up strong. You, you wonder if Cook struggles at the free throw line or deterring him from wanting to get back to the charity stripe. He's only shooting 53% from the free throw line on the season. And just one for three tonight. Thirty-nine, thirty-three. Poyas. Early second half. Savage comes up empty. Heath will run it up. They go inside to Cook, and he traveled prior to the move. I think that's the right call. It looked like he was shuffling his feet on the catch. He did an excellent job running the floor and getting O'Connell on his back, but moved his feet. So the Hoyas give it back to the Warriors. Clark in traffic with the kick. Diallo fouled on the shot attempt and score the bucket. 
Well, once again, we, we talked about how Merrimack was fouling jump shooters. Now it's Georgetown. Good kick from Clark. It's a great shot fake and step in for Diallo. It's got to be under control, Tom, when you're contesting these jump shots. It's not that hard to not barrel into shooters. Diallo shoots 44% from the floor for the season for the transfer from Manhattan. He's also 84% from the free throw line, so he can get Merrimack even closer to Ed Cooley's Georgetown Hoyas early in the second half. How about a three-point game? Yeah, Ismail Masood now on the floor, who's knocked down a couple of shots. He's roaming that baseline. See if you can't find him for an open three. Keith on the dribble. Boy is led by seven at halftime. They go inside to Cook. They'll create contact. O'Connell is defending. It looks like Cook may have earned a trip to the free throw line. Cook has to stay aggressive. He has to continue to work to post up, continue to crash that offensive glass. And he's going to be able to put Merrimack into foul trouble. And this is where he's got to really put his fingerprints on the game. Cook has gotten into double figure scoring three times this season. They may need some offense from him and the rest of his teammates, but Jaden Epps. Not available for the second half as McCoy comes in for Merrimack. Cook does the damage on the glass, though. Averages eight rebounds per game. That is fourth best for the Big East. It's both free throws. Georgetown is a team ninth in the conference, 67% from the line. That's Clark calculating the angle for two. Watch out now. We got a one-point game. How about Bud Clark at 5'10"? That's twice he's driven all the way to the basket and gotten shots to go over bigger defenders. And he made it look easy. Yes, he did. Too. Just a straight line drive. There's got to be some rim protection for Georgetown. Masood for three. On the weak side, Dirkak trying to lead the break. Had it poked away by Cook, and then it hit Dirkak. It's going to be Hoya basketball. Well, his nickname's Bud. He's best buds with Joe Gallo. The way that Merrimack plays that zone, they're so extended, Tom, on the arc that it could be challenging for those guys. The guy that's going to have opportunities is Supreme Cook. He's going to have one-on-one -on -one post ups and opportunities to crash the offensive glass. I think Cook needs to score a little bit for Georgetown. The other layer to Epps not being available is that not only does he score, but he gets his teammates involved. He leads this team in assists as well. So both of those elements missing the rest of the way for Georgetown in the second half. Yeah, ball handling, playmaking. Part of that playmaking term is scoring and passing. Cook against two defenders, a little strong. Fight for the loose ball and won by Clark. It's a shot that Cook's got to make, though. Masood collapsing defensively to make the play. He has done a good job protecting the rim coming off weak side. He kicks it out to Heath. Catch and release for three. Styles offensive glass. Masood was also there. They called a jump ball. As Georgetown is just pounding Merrimack on the offensive glass. He had a couple of Hoyas that could have come down with this one. It's a quick jump ball, but it'll go Merrimack's way. I think Ed Cooley's got a gripe. So the Warriors with the basketball, trailing by one. But what Georgetown needs to do is string together some stops so they can get out and run in transition. And Clark is wide open. Easy two again for Adam Bud Clark. But he is woke up here in this second half. He has really done a good job. Just an easy basket cut. Styles got tied up by McCoy. Well, Why the arrow favors Georgetown here on this? Excuse me, Tom. Sorry on, on this back cut. Get caught ball watching and Clark. Easy cut. 
Baycoat was watching the ball, not keeping vision of his man, and Clark makes him pay. And Merrimack is up by one. Stinson was big on that play on the baseline as well to find it open Clark and now a foul against the Warriors you mentioned Clark in the nine points three of six shooting He's a double-digit scorer For Merrimack Almost 14 points per game for Bud Clark So now Supreme Cook out you got the freshman drew fielder roaming that baseline as the big man Trying to Get guys in and out of that lane, get some ball and body movement. Good flash from Masood. Masood, the miss, O'Connell, the clearance. Three point attempt from Stinson, and he hits it. Jalen Stinson for the Warriors, and it's a four point lead. Incredible from the Warriors. And not enough urgency from Georgetown sprinting back and not getting matched up. Uh oh. Taken away. Clark unimpeded to the rim. The Warriors. A stunning first segment of this second half after trailing. In that second half, and they're up to 50% as a team. Georgetown 33% shooting on the game. The Hoyas dominating the glass, unable though to convert on those second and third opportunities on the offensive end. Yeah, and Merrimack doing what they do, turning Georgetown over 12 steals for Merrimack in this game. And so again, no Jaden Epps, so offense has been clunky for Georgetown in this second half. Another turnover. Clark the steal. Stumbled, regathered. Shakes Brumbaugh, flips it into the corner. Stinson missed out of that corner. Georgetown's got to run. Keep in mind, Styles, zero and gray, is the third leading scorer in the Big East. Almost 18 points per game. Heath, the long range three. Jay Heath. Boy, needed it really bad. And maybe that'll get Heath going. He's been quiet as well. So five points for Heath, who averages close to 11 points per game. He's a 41% three-point shooter in his first three of the night, as Nick mentioned. So that's now five of nine on three-point chances for Georgetown. Savage. Kick out McCoy. Three-pointer rims out. They might have got Styles against O'Connell. CJ Heath contested long one he's a very capable shooter he's a guy that's scored over 1200 points in his career and they need him to start to score here with Epps out for the rest of this game Heath the senior from Washington DC Durkak backing in against Heath and a foul is committed So we've got a three-point game. Capital One are in. Well, he's at 35% as a team shooting. That is below their season average of 47%, which is fifth best in the Big East. Dirkak's at the free throw line for Merrimack. Something to keep in mind is Georgetown has been in a lot of close games. They lost a close one to holy cross but then they won in overtime against american they were just in a close game against jackson state so while you wouldn't want this to be the case if you're ed cooley his team is relatively comfortable in a close game so you don't anticipate them to totally panic here being down four with just under 12 to play and merrimack has also lost two in a row in three of its last four they played an overtime game on saturday and lost to Alabama State by six. Masu steps into the three ball. Down and out. Heath had a chance. Durkat comes away with it. It's another one where I thought Heath should have just come down with it instead of tip it in. Another block from Masu. Looked like Styles was trying to save it in the corner, but stepped on the end line. But Ismail Masood has done a really good job blocking shots. 
Koya's have five blocks as a team in the game. Durkak trying to back his way in against Heath. There's a follow alertly on the offensive glass. Durkak missed, and Tumnu did not. 48 42. Brumbaugh. Difficult shot. Fouled on the drive for Brumbaugh. Which is great effort from Atumnu. Timing it up, high pointing it, chipping it in. And you can just feel that momentum pendulum is all swung towards Merrimack right now. Rumble off the free throw line. And Cooley trying to stay positive with his group. I thought it was cool talking to, to Coach Cooley that he has a saying that he tells his players is just get me to the final four minutes. He, he takes great pride in being able to coach his teams to victory in close games. And so when you preach that, to trust your coach in those close games, that can help you in a time like this. Brumbaugh just 104 from the free throw line. He'd only missed two free throws all season prior to tonight. 11 of 13 before the evening started. He was able to connect on that last one. And now 48-43. Tough shot. Volleyballed around, taken by Cook. Here's Heath on the run. I think Masood got that tip in as well. Masood entry. Cook. Itumnu. Pleading his case to no avail. And it just seems like Merrimack has no answer for these Supreme Cook duck ins. When he wants to post up, he is burying the Warriors underneath the basket. He's got to continue to do that, and the ball's got to continue to get thrown inside. Five points on the night for Cook, two of eight shooting. Does have seven rebounds. That leads the way for Georgetown. In fact, that leads everybody tonight. He's one of the top rebounders in all of the Big East Conference. Miss from Masood. Boy, I don't know about that one. Tommy, um, and against the zone, you can kind of get that shot whenever you, whenever. At the end of the clock, if you got to hoist up a three, you can do it. So that's five of 11 on three pointers as a team for Georgetown. Along the baseline, Savage. It's a three ball. And Durkak with a nice baseline drive and drift kick to Savage. And largest lead of the game tonight at eight points for Merrimack. Styles tries to answer. Cook with the tip. Going high for that one. Then he ran into Durkak. Just trying to run back up the floor. He's a, a play on. So now Georgetown will set some full court pressure. Maybe that little break allowed Georgetown to kind of catch their breath here a little bit. They've been reeling. It's Clark who dribbles it up for Merrimack. Leading 51-45. Nine and a half minutes to go in our second half. Tom Wormy, Nick Ba, our outstanding FS1 College Hoops production crew with you. Washington, D.C. and Capital One Arena. Driving to the rim and the foul on the drive by Diallo. Heath was defending for the Hoyas. Do a great job extending pressure and then Heath just gambles, doesn't get it, and gives a straight line drive to Diallo and has to foul. Frustrating, you do a nice job defending for 21 seconds and then you get out of position and you foul. Eight of 10 as a team for Merrimack for the free throw line so far tonight. And Diallo now four for four from the strike. Eight points. This feels like final nine minutes here where Georgetown needs to impose their will physically. They've already been crushing Merrimack on the offensive glass, but they need to continue to do that and then take the pressure up a notch defensively. They're the bigger team. They're the more athletic team. Got to have that manifest itself in a positive way on both ends of the floor. Georgetown just two its last 11 field goal attempts. Brumbaugh. Styles right back to him. Cranks up the three. There's a whistle. 
Is that another three-point shooter fouled? Yeah, that's happened on a number of occasions tonight against Merrimack. Said Savage hit Brumbaugh's arm on the three. It's a mental mistake. Take another look at it. I mean, that's at least the fourth yes. time that they fouled the three-point shooter. It's never good. Twice, when... <laughs> it's resulted in a four-point yeah. play. It's never good when you've lost count on the amount of times that there's been a foul on a, on a three-pointer. But that's where we're at in this game. You can understand that the visiting Warriors are a little bit excited here. Yeah, they Taking like... the lead in the second half. Absolutely. They feel like they're, they're in control of this game. And again, with... Jaden Epps out for the remainder of this game. Got a really good opportunity if you're Merrimack to get a win on the road at Georgetown. And Merrimack played their last three games in Birmingham, Alabama, a multi team event at Samford University. Where they won one game and lost two. That included the OT loss to Alabama State on Saturday. They've got the basketball in the lead. Up by five. Three, you don't want to play crazy, but this is where that defensive pressure and athleticism just has to get taken up another level if you're Georgetown. Hey, just switching everything. Supreme Cook trying to slide his feet in a stance. Third catch, shot clock winding down. McCoy. Shot clock's at one. He recognizes. Cook goes up for the rebound. That's a good possession, though. Defensively from Georgetown. Got Merrimack on their heels, switched everything, pressured. Critical possession for the Hoyas. Rolling down towards eight minutes to go in regulation. Bristol is in there. 31 in gray. This is Brumbaugh. Shot clock down to seven. Bristol had it knocked away over zealous defending. Durkak took a swipe at the basketball. Got a piece of Bristol. Another unfortunate one where Merrimack preaches aggression and activity, but defend pretty well for 25 seconds nothing really going for Georgetown he is swiped down on the ball handler and now Georgetown's at the line it's now seven fouls against the Warriors in this half so Bristol to the line cannot convert free throw shooting been an issue 15 of 26 are the Hoyas from the line Got a poor free throw shooting team this season. Yeah. Ninth in the conference. 67%. This is O'Connell stepping back. Masood goes high for the rebound and secures it. Bristol on the run, attacking the rim. And Bristol got fouled too. Well, one of the few transition opportunities for Ada Runner. Former Merrimack assistant in his eighth season as the head coach. Some of the pertinent numbers here in our game summary as we play late into the second half. Hey, that's pretty much the game. One team's turning the ball over, Georgetown. The other team is struggling to keep them off the glass. Merrimack doing a, a poor job rebounding defensively. Feels like Merrimack's kind of lost its poise offensively here. I, I like the ball either in Durkak's hands or Bud Clark has done a nice job getting downhill and in the lane. Durkak leads the way with 13 points. Clark has 11. Most of the Durkak damage done in the first half. This is Clark trying to shake the defender. Cook went up to grab it. Hoyas on the run. Cook fills the lane and lays it in. Well, one thing Ed Cooley started to do is switch everything defensively and press out and that forced the tough shot from Bud Clark over Ismail Masood, which then created the run out opportunity where Supreme Cook Gets the lay in and a chance for three Chance for the first Georgetown lead since the 1559 mark of our second half when they led 39 38 Double-digit scoring for Cook. Well, right now, Merrimack's gotten really stagnant offensively. A lot of standing and watching. So we had Brumbaugh and Styles defending there on the inbounds. 
based on the reaction from the crowd, that call's going against Ed Cooley. I think they got it. Hoyo putting a paw on somebody on the inbounds. Supreme Cook has a double double tonight with 10 points and 10 boards. Durkacz at the free throw line. Durkacz got pretty good lineage. His dad played at FIU, scored a thousand points, was also teammates with Carlos Arroyo and Rajah Bell. So he's got a lot of good support and basketball people in his life. 14 points for Durkacz to lead the way for the Warriors. And his first free throw tied us up at 54. Brumbaugh. Spin cycle. Knocked out of bounds, and it'll stay with Georgetown. It's going to be hard to dribble through a zone. Probably need to give that one up if you're Brumbaugh. 11 seconds to work with on the shot clock. Bristol's got nine points in the game. Shot clock down to five for Brumbaugh on the run. Ran into the defender and an offensive foul. And again, there's been that slight tweak to yes. that rule this year, Nick. Yeah, where you, the defender has to be set before that plant foot takes off. And that's pretty close. I think Atumu got there. But they're really trying to crack down on charges of guys sliding over and just sliding underneath the offensive player. But that was one that I think the officials actually got right. I thought Atumu was there in time for the charge. So here we go with the final six and a half minutes. We are tied at 54. Merrimack and Georgetown in their first ever meeting. Could go right down to the wire. Savage. Bristol both in the neighborhood and that ball is awarded to the Hoyas. A little disjointed on the pop out and the catch as Savage caught it. Kind of shuffled his feet, tried to go around his back because Bristol left his feet and just knocked it out of bounds. Official was right on top of the call. A couple of ties, five lead changes, tied at 54 right now. Georgetown led by seven at halftime. This foul against Merriman. I'm sure Joe Gallo can live with some of these fouls because you, you want your team to be aggressive, but it's a fine line between aggression and a lack of discipline. So Dirk Hack now has three personal fouls with Bristol at the free throw line. Just 61% as a team from the line tonight. For Georgetown as Clark comes back in. There's the foul trouble situation for the Warriors and Hoyers. And Bristol able to convert the second. So it's a momentary one point lead for Georgetown. Diving attempt from Cook. Able to recover. Ball goes out of bounds, and it's Hoya ball. Well, Georgetown has taken their defensive intensity up a level, but I think Merrimack has also gotten really lackadaisical offensively, gotten a little stagnant, gotten on their heels. And they kind of go hand in hand. And all of a sudden, now Merrimack's lost the poise offensively. 36% as a team from the floor for the Hoyas, but not recently. The 10-1 scoring run up over three minutes in duration at the moment. Trying to get more guys on the baseline now for Georgetown. Instead of being out on the perimeter, you're flooding the baseline. Bristol. Georgetown crashes the glass, and the foul goes against Merrimack. I think it was Supreme Cook going for that offensive rebound. He is just... Really done a nice job being active on the glass. Again, this 2-3 zone, they're so extended, the wings are, that it's basically one guy in the paint left to fend off Cook and post-ups and keep him off the glass. It's a lot on Atumu's plate. They gave the foul to Stinson, so he now has two personal fouls. Showed you that Diallo and Atumu are the two players for Merrimack in foul trouble. Good looking free throws there from Supreme Cook. 
And the run up to 12-1 for the Hoyas. That been a game of runs in the second half. There's a 15-0 run from Merrimack to start the second half. Georgetown's now answered. Stinson. Pass Brumbaugh. Masood trying to help. Oh, he spun it in. That is a beautiful drive from Stinson. He's kept his dribble alive a couple different times. Once on the baseline and there, knifing through the lane to free himself up for a layup. Seven points now for Stinson. Georgetown by one. Turnaround Styles. Big rebound from Clark. Wants to score it at the other end. Recovery from Bristol. Shoveled ahead to Brumbaugh and a foul called. Looks like Clark got a piece of Bristol. Well, first a good little knife through from Jalen Stinson to get to the opposite side of the floor for the layup. Doing a good job attacking. That was good defense from Wayne Bristol. That's where Bud Clark, he's a talented freshman, but at only 5'10", he can get into trouble when he's in amongst the trees in the paint. So Bristol continues his march to the free throw line of this game. He's now 7 of 10 as Clark will come out for Joe Gallo's Warriors. And the free throw line's loomed large. As Georgetown's not shot it great from the free throw line, but they've taken 34 free throws compared to Merrimack's 14. Players have also made five three-pointers, three made threes for Merrimack. That's Stinson. Stinson trying to work off a screen. Switch of the ball screen. Cook almost stole it away. Brumbaugh did. And shoveled it to Masood. Hoyas by three. Someone to flash right in the middle of that zone. Pops in the air and taken back by the Warriors on the break. Two on one. Durkak lays it in. Off the feet from Diallo. What a quick, smart layup from Durkak. Understanding that the Hoyas were trailing the play. That's a high. IQ play. He's done that the last two games, but he also had Jaden Epps on the floor for him in those last two games. We'll see what Coach Cooley's got up his sleeve in the final four minutes here in a one point game with these Hoyas. And Epps had over 30 points in both of those games that you referenced, Nick, those last two victories for the Hoyas. They've got the basketball, they lead by one. Merrimack has to think about rebounding the ball. When this shot goes up, got to be a bunch of Warriors trying to rebound. Lofted inside. Styles, great catch and follow hoop. Finally, Ed Cooley's able to drop a set out of that timeout, something where Cooley is really, really good. Get that lob, screen the back of the zone. It's a big... Execution sequence from Georgetown there. How about the first field goal of the night from Styles? Durkak on the drive at the other end from Merrimack. It's the exact same play. Merrimack one ran to start the game. A little fake handoff and Durkak driving it all the way into the middle. Good answer from both these coaches drawn up nice set plays for their team. 18 points now for the leading scorer this season for the Warriors. Inside of three minutes to go in regulation. The shot clock is down to eight for Brumbaugh. Shot clock to two. Brumbaugh got it away. Cook had a hand on it. Bristol as well. Masood driving baseline. Big collision and foul against the Warriors. That's a two move. Great job by both these coaches drawing up and manufacturing baskets. A little lob against the zone, and then Durkak fake handoff. Defense gets caught snoozing for a second, and Durkak's able to drive and get a finish. But this has just been the theme of the game for Georgetown, just dominating the offensive glass. Hardest thing to do 
in a zone is rebound, and especially when you're outmanned and outsized in a contest like this, Georgetown has needed to emphatically win the rebounding column, and they have. So Atumnu has fouled out of the game. Masood, first free throw attempt of the night. And this will be attempt number 36 this evening from the line for Red Cooley's team. Masood has loomed large, hasn't he? They've needed him. It's his first game back, as you pointed out. They've needed his shot blocking. They've needed his offensive versatility. He's knocked down a couple of threes. He's got eight points in total coming off of that right hand injury that kept him out of action up until tonight. Just trying to drive it, just trying to isolate and attack Brumbaugh. Goes back leaning in. Cook with the help. Unable to get the shot away. Brumbaugh and Cook in the neighborhood. I think they're going to whistle Brumbaugh. I think they are. Just bided him a little too much. And Brumbaugh has Dirkak stuck. Right? He stood his ground, stood his ground. And here it started scooting forward. There's, you just wall up. You got Masood behind you. You got Cook looming in there from the front side of it. And now Brumbaugh fouls out of the game. Fallon Durkak. So Brumbaugh leaves with six points. He was one of five from the floor. Four of seven from the free throw line. Seventy-six percent free throw shooter. Big miss, and that's off of Diallo. You could see it go off his knee, fighting for that miss. So Durkak is just two of five from the free throw line, 11 of 15 as a team from the strike. Merrimack and down by three. Cam Baycoat in, good pass inside. Boy, they get a moving screen on Supreme Cook down low. I think they did. They got Supreme Cook trying to seal off his man. They finally got that ball into the heart of that zone and got the low man sealed, but Cook was moving. So if you're Merrimack thinking about a three-pointer, well, they will drive inside. It was Clark trying to drive. Back to Georgetown with the three-point lead. Warriors have only made three three-pointers all game on 14 chances. And now Gallo animated on that sideline. We did hear a whistle. I think they teed him up. Looked like he threw a piece of paper in the air, potentially. Wow, at a critical moment in this game. It was a, a towel. He didn't like the travel call. It's a boy. It's where you you got to have a little bit more poise if you're Joe Gallo and throwing a towel like that. But boy, that's pretty that's pretty sensitive from the officials there in a in a one possession game. So now it's a four point game. This was Bud Clark on the move against Bristol. Feet are sliding a little bit, but it's close. Either way, one out of two at the line, and Georgetown now with the ball. 38 free throw attempts in the game for Georgetown. And up by four, minute and a half to go. Styles from the corner. That's a three. Rattles out. I like Dirkak driving it. See if you can't get him the ball, get him in the middle of the floor with that right hand. Merrimack is a program. 0-3 against the Big East. There's a three-pointer from O'Connell. And it's a one-point game. Just his second made three of the season is a huge one. He had tried a three earlier in the game and missed, but not this time. For Jacob O'Connell, who averages just under four points per game, he's got six on the technical. So we'll see if that single point looms large down the stretch here in these final seconds, just inside of a minute to go. 
Uh, he may still be thinking about that yeah. technical foul that was called. He tossed the towel over his shoulder. See what Ed Cooley wants. You got Dontre Styles at the high post, and you got Supreme Cook down low. Heat. Shot clock at seven. Heat. Masood dropped it to Bristol. Up and under. Spun it off the backboard. Wow, what poise from Masood. Instead of hoisting up a tough jumper, he keeps his head up and his dribble alive and finds a cutter. 14 points for Bristol. Durkak got fouled by Masood. He will go to the free throw line down by three. Well, give Masood a lot of credit for his poise at the end of the clock and a good cut and finish from Wayne Bristol as it looked like a possession was going nowhere, ends in two points. But then Merrimack going back to their stud, Dirk Hack. They've loved to just get him the ball in the middle of the floor and let him drive. He did a good job pivoting his way into a foul on Masood. Got the first. Three of six on the night from the line. You can make it a one-point game with 22 seconds left in regulation in Capital One Arena. And that's 20 points of the game for Dirk Hack. That's a good sub here, so you can totally set your press and get your press breakers on the floor if you're Georgetown. So you get another ball handler on the floor, take Supreme Cook out. And if you're Merrimack here, you make Georgetown handle the ball a little bit. And the clock ran. So the shot clock is off. One point game. Durkak's up to 20 points in the game to lead everybody. Clark has 11. Trying to adjust that clock back to 22 seconds flat. Here, Merrimack, you, you put Georgetown a couple of traps here. You you got some time to work with. Obviously, you're going to have to eventually foul, but force Georgetown to handle the ball a little bit. They've struggled to turn it over, or they take care of it. Styles. Baco. Heath. There's a whistle prior to the ball coming across midcourt. Looks like they got Heath. That was a, that was a good job. Merrimack couple of traps and then you obviously got a foul and now Heath with two big free throws coming up and Heath tonight has not been to the free throw line seven of eleven prior to that free throw for Jay Heath so Merrimack will call a time free throw attempt of the night and the 24th free throw attempt of the second half for Georgetown. Clutch. Now you do bring Cook back in. He'll guard O'Connell. Keep in mind, O'Connell just pick and popped. So it'll be interesting now to see if Georgetown wants to foul. There's still too much time to do it right now quickly. But if that clock gets under... Six, seven seconds. You maybe want to think about foul. Four of 15 on three point tries. It looked like Durkak was trying to get to the rim. Masood impeding his progress. Game clock is down to 6.8 seconds. I think that was handled correctly. There needed to be a little bit more urgency from Merrimack getting the ball into their offense. Four of seven from the line tonight, Durkak. Mm. Merrimack going small. So if you get his first big free throw from Durkak. What a night for that young man with the 20 points and seven rebounds, leading everybody in scoring. 21 total points now, and it's a two-point game. All right, so hard cuts, hard screens, 
And if you're Merrimack, you got to communicate these switches, make it tough. A little football action from Ed Cooley getting this in. Hook out. Bay coat in. Inbounds. Styles. Clark was right on him immediately. Well, you, you talk about a veteran coach in Ed Cooley walking over all these sorts of situations. Those guys knew exactly what they were supposed to do. Well executed. You're down a man in Jaden Epps. It doesn't matter. You execute the inbounds, which is sometimes the most difficult part in this situation. Give yourself a chance to knock down two free throws. Three-point game. Obviously, if you miss this free throw, if you're Georgetown, they'd improve to five and one on their home court. Styles at the line. Mm. You can foul. There it is. Bristol stepping to Durkak to foul him. Smart. That's Ed Cooley clearly explaining to his team what they need to do, but these kinds of decisions on whether you foul up three or not are usually made in the preseason and discussed in preseason practices. Okay, so four seconds left. Two-point game. Clark comes back in. O'Connell out. One more free throw for Durkak. See if they're going to miss this or not. They're going to intentionally miss it potentially with four seconds. They win some size. They do. They did. They got it. And the miss on the layup. The chance for Savage. And the clock runs out. Oh. The Hoyas win it 69 67.